And as we continue, let me invite you to please rise and if you would open your pew Bibles to page 862, our gospel reading is from John 1, beginning with verse 19. This was the, uh, the scripture that was the focus of our first devotion on the roads this summer. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Friends, this is the gospel of the Lord. I invite you to please be seated. Two questions. First one, who are you? Second question, who aren't you? Which one is easier to answer? We are frequently more comfortable identifying and defining ourselves by who we're not. We'll say things like, well, I'm not an athlete. I'm not an artist. I'm not a dancer. I'm not a writer. I'm not whatever. The truth is, there are probably more things that we are not than things that we are. So why bother listing them? I mean, it's fairly obvious. I am not a Polynesian fire dancer. I don't have to say that, usually. Now, instead of listing all of our knots this summer, we encouraged all of the folks, kids, adult leaders, to be bold in sharing who we are. On the first night of each trip, the answers to the question, who are you, were fairly predictable. They were fairly safe. I am a daughter. I am a son. I'm a student. I'm a parent. I'm an athlete. I'm a musician. But on the last night of each trip, the answers were different and much less predictable. Folks were saying, well, I'm a leader. I didn't know that. I'm, I'm a teacher. I'm an encourager. You know, I'm someone who can do more than I thought. I'm a storyteller. I'm someone who knows a little bit more about what it is to live on purpose. You know, I'm someone who loves other people and... I found out this week that I'm loved by others, too. Now, over the past 14 years, I've been blessed to participate in these powerful experiences of God's presence and work in the lives of kids and of adult leaders, and I'm thankful, so thankful, to have the, the front row seat to these amazing aha moments when people recognize their unique places in a mission and a family that far exceeds their own imaginations. It is awesome in the truest sense of the word, inspiring an overwhelming sense of awe. And I can't wait every year for their stories to be shared just like we had today so that others can hear and others can be inspired by what God has been up to and what God can do in our lives. And yet it's still easier for us to define ourselves by what we're not. Even when we hear over and over again how ordinary moments have been transformed into divine encounters with God, we have a tough time seeing how Jesus might be at work in our own lives. It's always easier to see something going on in someone else's life, which is why at the end of each trip we allow some time for affirmation among the folks in our group, a time for sharing with each other how we've seen Christ's light shining in one another's lives. We give time for each person to write encouraging things in each other's devotional books. And when we share these observations with each other, it's amazing. Folks write more than just, you know, this trip was fun, I'm glad you were on it. Instead, they write things with a great deal of depth and really profound thoughts. They'll say things like, you know, I was really inspired when you continued to climb that rock even though you were scared. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me when I was really feeling lonely and homesick. You really reminded me of Jesus when you talked to that woman at the nursing home. 
This is the power of the risen Christ in our lives. When we stop moving at the speed of life and take time to consider who we really are, we come to the powerful realization that we are often far more than we ever thought we were. And we are capable of far more than we ever thought we could do, like sleeping in a tent or, or taking on Class 5 rapids in Colorado, clearing brush, or talking to people we never thought we could, rappelling down an 80-foot cliff, facing the unknown, knowing that Christ is already there, and experiencing a people and a history and a culture that we never knew be before in a new way. We find out we're more than just our occupations. We're more than just a list of relationships. We're defined by a purpose that is sacred, that's holy. We have a value that goes beyond our own imagination. Who are we? We are children of a living God who have a unique role in an eternal kingdom, whose lives have value because each of us carries that spark of God's Holy Spirit that inspires us to grow and to serve and to live in ways that really the rest of the world cannot ever hope to inspire us to. Folks, there's a tremendous story being written in this world, and each of us has a unique, powerful role in it. And that story isn't about us, but that doesn't mean we aren't participants. We each contribute with the gifts that we have, and each contribution is valued and holy and significant. It doesn't matter if we've been experiencing a faithful life for decades or if our journey's just beginning like Sadie's is today. Our contributions to this story are incredible. The book we read on the high school trip to Colorado is called How to Be Here by Rob Bell. And in it, the author poses a great question. What would it look like for you to approach tomorrow with a sense of honor and privilege, believing that you have work to do in the world and that it's needed, that you have a path and that you're working your craft of living? What would it look like if we each saw ourselves as the beloved children of God that we are? What would it look like if we saw the things that we can do and the time that we have as holy and unique gifts that are meant to be shared each and every day? What would it look like if we saw each day as an opportunity to witness Christ's power to transform our lives? Friends, this congregation is extraordinary in its sense of holy calling. Trinity exists because it's a community of mission, a collection of people who are aware that God blesses us daily with gifts that are meant to be used to change the world. This is a hub. This is a command center for lives that make a difference beyond these walls. This is going to be so clear in just a couple of weeks when we send hundreds of people into this community for just a couple of hours on the afternoon of September 11th to do God's work with our hands. This is what Pastor Todd was talking about. If you haven't signed up yet, I hope you will. It's going to be an amazing afternoon, an incredible afternoon of service for everyone. Not just the kids, not just the parents, not just the older folks, not just the younger folks, everyone to share their gifts. I hope you'll allow yourself to ask the question, who am I? And give God a chance to answer in a new way that afternoon. This is a congregation of people who do so much, and yet I truly believe that really, we're still just beginning. There's so much more that can be done and will be done with the amazing gifts that God has given. I'm excited to see how God continues to say to each one of us, I know you think you're only this, but there is so much more. Let's go on an adventure together. I can't wait to see all of the aha moments to come in each of our lives as we recognize our gifts, as we're surprised by our gifts, and as we share those gifts. And speaking of, you know, we hear these incredible stories from these kids who share their experiences, but you know, it's not just them who make these trips happen. It's a team of adult leaders. 
It's a team of folks who helped with transportation things, getting vans back and forth. And there was a very special team of folks who volunteered to pray for folks on trips. And so I wonder if those people who were part of our summer prayer ministry would just please stand for just a second. I know we're Lutheran. We don't want to be recognized. But I'm asking if you would, just for a moment, to please stand. If you prayed for one of our young people. Now, friends, this is a very small sampling of the 100 people plus. Thank you so much who prayed for kids on their trips. They prayed for safety. They prayed for fun. They prayed for meaningful and power, powerful experiences of Christ. Friends, these trips couldn't be what they are without you. It took this entire community to make these trips what they are. And so I'm thankful to God for all of you for sharing your unique gifts. I'm thankful for you for taking your time to pray for a kid or an adult leader this summer. I'm thankful that we get a chance to do this together to do God's work in this world. Our worship continues with the collection of our offering.